Good morning, everyone. We look joyful today, isn't it? Hallelujah. Look at our children. Hello. Good. You're welcome to St. Paul's Church, Balton. My name is Reverend Dozy. Morning, man. Today is our all age service, harvest service. And if you're joining us for the first time, you are welcome. And we hope you find a home here, be able to give you all the information on what is happening here at St. Paul's Church. To our viewers online, you are welcome as well. Now I'm going to hand over to Andrew, one of our church wardens, for other notices before we begin our service this morning. Good morning, everybody. They're a bit slow this one. Shall we try it again? Morning, everybody. Come on. Hey, that's better. Um, notices for this morning. Um, just as usual, uh, when you come in the door, if you would like to give an offering this morning, the plate is just in front of the font. If you have any prayer requests, words of knowledge, anything you want to share this morning, please raise your arm nice and high. Uh, Liz will come to you with a microphone. It has got a new battery in it, I understand, this week. So that's good. And those then watching online can also see and hear as well. If you're online this morning and you'd like to send in a prayer request, you can send it to the usual number, 07947 153344. And after the service, we would encourage you that if, if anybody would like prayer, then to encourage you to speak to the neighbour next door to you and ask them if they'll pray for you. Or if you'd like one of the church leadership to pray for you, and come and speak to us. So we would just encourage you to pray for each other this morning. Um, our little church isn't meeting this morning because obviously our children are with us, but that's, that's starting it, that's back next week. We still need a couple of more helpers for that and also the Thursday group that we hope to start at some point for the teenagers. So if you feel called to that and like to assist, then please come and speak to, to Dozy. Uh, this coming Wednesday is Holy Communion at 10.15 and next Sunday we continue with our sermon series on Ephesians. Can I say that during the first hymn, we encourage you if you come with your harvest gift or anything just to bring it to the altar during the first hymn. I have the bounds to read before we begin. I publish the bounds of marriage between Graham Andrew James Richmond and Rebecca Louise Goham both of the parish of St. Paul's Church, Balton. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it none. Now let us pray for Graham and Rebecca as they prepare for their upcoming wedding in December. Our gracious God, we ask your presence to be upon Graham and Rebecca. Be at the center of every decision and unite them in love and your peace. None and forever. Amen. And the opening response. You are the life and hope of the earth. By your strength, you establish the mountains. Let us bless our generous God, whose goodness crowns the year. You make the gateways of the morning and evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. Let us bless our generous God, whose goodness crowns the year. You provide the people with grain you have prepared. You soften the earth with the showers and blessing and bless its growth. Let us bless our generous God, whose goodness crowns the year. You crown the year with your goodness. Your ways overflow with richness. The desert's pasture overflow. The middle greet themselves with grain. 
they shout and sing together for joy. Let us bless our generous God, whose goodness crowns the year. Now we stand for opening him. Come, you thankful people, come. Please be seated. We now move into the time of confession. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gift carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruit of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there was no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Savior, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We stand to say the affirmation of faith together. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. These we received and these we believe. Amen. Please be seated. Today is All Age Harvest Service. I love Harvest Sunday. And I'm not sure if you do. Do you? I love Harvest. I remember as a child we carried crops harvested from our local farm to church for harvest. My mom will select the biggest and the finest. When we asked why, she replied, God has provided for us by allowing these crops grow. When we give back to the Lord in thanksgiving, he will make next year harvest greater. My mother's way of showing appreciation to God during harvest never left my mind. And I wonder if someone here know where our food comes from. Where do you think our food comes from? Any idea? Hello, yes, Chimbe? Oh, the microphone is coming. Wait. All over the world. All over the world. Is that correct? Shall we give her a round of applause? That's a good one. One more. And it also comes from God and it also comes from farms. It comes from God and it comes from the farm. That's a good one, B. Can, can we give him a round of applause, please? Anyone else? I was just looking up to the Google search and I discover, you know, whether it's right, I'm not sure, but it says nearly 80% of British food is imported abroad. Is that right? 80%. Of our food comes from abroad. Is that right? That's what I saw on the Google. I'm not sure. I don't know. Is that okay? No? Not really. Not really. But that's what I saw. So, do we grow our own food now? That's the next question. Do we? How many of you have your own food in your garden? Sort of. I know Paul. Yes, I've been there. That's really amazing. Yes, I wish. Yes, Pam. We should, isn't it? What we see today is more processed food. You get to the Tesco, Sainsbury, Morrison, you get the food from the shelf, and then straight away to the oven, and then five, ten minutes is done. And we say we are eating organic. Is it organic? Not sure. <laughs> So harvest is a time when we express our thanks to God for his goodness by helping to meet the needs of others. In harvest, we remember that God created the world and all his wonders for us to use and enjoy. And he provides for all our needs. Nowadays, few of us grow our own food or have to spend much time worrying about where our next meal will come from. The truth is that even if we don't worry, 
about where to get our next meal. We worry about so many things, like paying our bills. You can see what is going on in the world today. Energy bill, the price is going up. Aftermath of the coronavirus crisis all over the world. Or how to fund the two kids in university. There's a lot to pay. So many to worry. But Jesus has something to say about the things we need. And the things we spend our time wanting and worrying about. Now I'm going to invite my daughter, Chim Dota, uh, to read Matthew chapter 6. Uh, verse 25 to 34 for us. Please, please pay attention. Okay? Over to you. <coughs> Kevin, is that on? Yeah, good. So, I'm going to stand here and then you face the congregation. Don't be shy. Okay, good. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store anyway, anyway in bands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Is that is, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown in the fire, will he much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't worry, said Jesus. Your father knows what you need. He reminds us that God has already giving us an abundance of good things to use and enjoy. Ask yourself this morning, why has God given us this? Why do we need it? All these good things are wonderful to have and appreciate, but that is not all. These gifts require a response from us. The first thing Jesus told us to do is stop worrying. And I'm looking for someone here. I need a volunteer to help me. Help me put this up. Can somebody help me? Oh, you're in a case? I'm looking for a case. Are you? I'm looking for a child. Sorry? Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> You, you, have done, you have done the reading. Are you looking for somebody else? Can someone else? If you know you haven't done anything, please. Okay. You're going to face the congregation, then hold it for me. What does it say? Stop worrying. Stop worrying, isn't it? In other words, trust in God. Because he knows what we need. 
This is really difficult, isn't it? Especially when times are hard. But Jesus is right. Worrying does not gain us anything. Not an extra penny. Not a single extra hour of life. All worrying does is rob us of the enjoyment of what we have. If we try to appreciate all the wonderful things God has given us in creation, we might start to trust that God is unbelievably generous and we provide for us. We may not get all the things we want, but God knows what we really need, isn't it? Worrying about the things in this world shows that we don't trust God or that our focus is more here in it than in heaven. We are on a journey, pilgrimage, and our final destination is where? Where? Heaven. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verses 1 and 3, let not your heart be in trouble. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If not so, I would have told you, I'm going up there to prepare. Where? Where is he going? Heaven. Up in heaven to prepare a place for you. When I come back, I will take you so that where I am, there you will be also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Can we clap for him, please? <laughs> so notice what Jesus says in verse 31. Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Here, Jesus is not talking about any rosary, like a dream home. These are basic survival needs. Food, water, clothing, shelter. Surviving extreme heat or cold. If you don't have these things, you will die. That's the truth. They are the necessity. We need them. Remember, when Jesus was talking to these people, there was no welfare system like we have today. No welfare system. If you're able to walk and refuse to do so, no one will take care of you. Not even your family. There are no food banks that we, like we have today. Okay? There are no soup kitchens like we have today, cow fair. You couldn't sign up for disability or welfare or any kind of assistance. Retirement plans were not even in place. When you got too old to walk or too injured, either your family took care of you or else you die. And yet Jesus says, do not worry. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Jesus can say this because he knows that the heavenly father knows that you need them. Jesus says in verse 32, for the pagans, in verse 32, for the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. Your heavenly father knows that you need food and water and clothing. The unbelievers don't know that God, the father, knows that they need food and water and clothing and other material things. So they pursue them. They run after them as the top agenda priority because they cannot rely on the Lord to provide for them but we as the children of God are different we know better isn't it and because we are different we know better and we live differently look at the comparison here 
The unbelievers run after all these things, food, water, clothing, as top priority in verse 32. But in verse 33, you and I seek first the kingdom. That's verse 33. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So God first and every other thing should be added. So what is the Lord saying to his children in this verse? What is he saying to us? Is he saying that we should become monks and cut ourselves away from the word? And then he will drop food, just like it happened in the Old Testament, the manna from heaven. Water and clothes into our laps. Not at all. I don't think so. What this passage is saying to each, every one of us is that we are to take Christ to the world. We are not to keep him to ourselves. I have people saying, oh, Christianity is by heart. I keep it to myself. No, I don't want to share it to anybody. That's not true. You need to tell others about the love of Christ. We as believers are in the kingdom of God. Jesus is king. We are his children, his servant, his friends, his witnesses, his ambassadors, and his disciples. We are to seek the welfare of the kingdom of God above other priorities. When we seek the welfare of the kingdom of God above other priorities, our priorities take second place to the kingdom priorities. So the second thing to do here is to share. So I'm going to look for somebody else again, another volunteer again to help me. Who's going to help me now? Another volunteer, please. Is he going to help? Yes, please. Yeah. Keep coming. Well done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can come to you now. Well done. You heard it. Yeah. Good. So what's he telling us to do? To share. You turn it this way. Yeah. That's good. To share. Okay. That's good. All these good gifts are not for us to keep and hoard. Do you have a friend who hoards things? There are so many of them. They buy things they don't want to give it out. They keep it to themselves. They are not using it and they don't want to share. Do you have a friend like that? Do you? There are some friends who they buy things, they don't use them, they don't give it out, they keep it. Do you have them? Yeah, I do. I have them. And I keep telling them, you have to share. Even if you don't know, send them to missionaries. They will take them to Tanzania and uh, Sudan and other places and give it out. It's a blessing. Sometimes I will go to Westminster and I will go to the shop, the clergy shops, and I buy a bunch of colors and then I will send them to, you know, Africans and people who don't have. So when you have things that you don't use, share. Your toys, you share. Do you share your toys? A bit. You see? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> you see? You have to share. Okay? That is why we have brought harvest offering today, isn't it? The food we have given will be shared with those in our community who need it most. This is one of the ways in which God provides for people's need. Not by making things appear out of the thin air but by using us as his hands, feet. Yeah? 
on earth to take the natural resources God has given to us and share them out to those who don't have. Then finally, I need a volunteer again. <laughs> Is that not you? Who else? Well, I've already done something. Oh, thank you. You have, yes. That's part of sharing. So you need to allow others to take part. Oh, Cheesy. Look at you. <laughs> High five. Okay, you heard it. What do we need to do? Give thanks. Told us to do what? To give thanks before we eat. Okay? When we share. Oh, thank you. Thank you for helping. And whenever we can, we need to remember that all good things come from God. So he deserves our thanks and praise. Sometimes we take gifts for granted, isn't it? Don't we? Probably because it's common or free. How do you feel? Just want to ask you this question. How do you feel when you give someone a gift and they don't bother to say thank you? How do you feel? They don't bother to say thank you. Yeah? How do you feel? Upset. Upset. Yes, I like that. Upset. Disappointed. Disappointed. That's a good word. One more. Unappreciated, yes? Any more? Fed up. Fed up, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes? You will feel sad, isn't it? Let me share a little story about an ingratitude experience I had recently. As I conclude. Last year, someone called me and asked for financial assistance on behalf of a family friend. I don't have money to meet my own needs at that time. But considering the situation, I went out of my way to give generously. The shocking thing was that this person didn't bother to say thank you. Even after he was told, I raised the money. I shared my feelings with my wife and she reminded me that this is an example of how we treat God. He gives us air to breathe, good health, food, shelter, and much more. Yet, instead of thanking him, we complain about the things he is yet to do. Isn't that how we behave? We complain more than we pray. We complain more than saying, God, thank you. Even if you don't know what to say, God, thank you for the gift of life. Isn't that amazing that we're here today together? Not by an accident, but God made it possible that you're here. It means a lot to him. Just saying thank you. So I'm going to invite uh, Chimde, my daughter again, to say a prayer. Lord of growth and harvest, you, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May we remember the hungry, may we share the goodness with all and may we be truly thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Play with it, play with it. Let's stand and worship the Lord together. We're going to start with Great is Your Faithfulness. Let's stand and worship the Lord together.
Holy Spirit this morning in the palace. Restore us, Lord, where we are wounded. And need your healing touch this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. Healing in his wings this morning. We need to receive that healing from the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to breathe through us this morning. Just sense the Lord say that just to, if you need the Lord's healing touch this morning, just to, just to lift your hand up to him this morning, to heal and restore.
Father, we thank you this morning for the abundance of your grace and love and purposes. Thank you for all that you've done for us in the past. And we thank you, Lord, that your presence is with us. And we thank you for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit who comes and guides and leads us. Father, we thank you that if we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, all these things will be added to us. And Lord, we pray your blessing on each one of us this morning. And will you, Lord, come by your power? Will you come with healing? Will you come with a power that will raise us into the presence of the living God? We worship you, exalt you, and give you all the praise and all the glory for what you do and what you are doing. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I come before you this morning and I'm crying for you because I need you. God, I'm a sinner. I've been born again and I went back into the world. But this morning, and for a time I've been crying for you, I don't know how to reach out to you. I want to thank Nena, somebody that I work with, that provides me with daily cares. But I'm the only one that can do that. Restore my soul. I listened to that song this morning. And I know how much that's needed. I want to thank this church. I want to thank this church just how much. Stop worrying. We live in unprecedented times. We don't even know how to look after each other. We don't even know how to hug each other. And this morning, God, stop worrying. Stop worrying. What can we do? We'll also listen to Psalm 23 that said, The Lord is my shepherd. So therefore, what can we do differently, Lord? We need to share our feelings on a daily basis. I know the Lord needs me and the devil is keeping me behind. I want people to ask me to pray for me. And in every single one in this church, I just want to say, I'm out God bless you. Thank you very much. should pray for each other this morning just look around the room and see who's hurting ask the lord to prompt you to pray for them just look around the room and pray for our brothers and sisters let's look at each other and pray for each other this morning those who are hurting those who are lonely those who are unwell
Right. I thank God for my dear sister who has just opened her heart. And she's been real with us. She's been real with God. And I feel that is what God is saying to us this morning. We've got to let go of the mask that we put on. We've got to allow ourselves to be vulnerable with each other. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think Dozy shared on his video about when we know how much we've been forgiven by God, we can forgive others. And I want to add to that, that when we experience and we know that unconditional love of God, that we can share that with others. So often we hold back. There are people hurting. There are people that are sick. And we need the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit to minister and express that unconditional love one to another. And God is saying, to go, let go of the mask that you put up because I see your hearts. And I'm looking for hearts that are totally surrender to me that can be my hands that can be my healing hands to the body of Christ in Jesus name Amen I just want to thank the Lord for the children in church today. I just want to thank the Lord. The Bible says that before each one of us was conceived in our mother's womb, the Lord knew us. And I just want to pray for every single child here, so many children, down to the little baby, Kana. Lord, we just want to thank you for each of these children that has come to church today. We do not just pray blessing on them, but Lord, we ask that each of them will grow up to know you personally. They will grow up to love you, Jesus. They will really fall in love with you. They will know you for themselves and they will be a blessing to their parents. We pray, Lord, that as they come this church, to this church, you will help us to be an encouragement to them, to teach them your word and help them to find you. And they will be a blessing to the world. And when their journey is over here, they will come back to you. We we'll pray for the moms. Many times it's mommies taking care of the children and the parents, the, the dads are not there. We we'll pray for encouragement. That, Lord, you pray a blessing on all the mothers. That, Lord, you take care of them. Take care of their own need more than they can take care of themselves. We ask, Lord, for a blessing. And for, your, for their heart to be full of joy. In the midst of all the challenges of being a mother. Thank you, Lord, even for their dads. Whether they are here in the church or not. We pray that, Lord, you help them to discover you. And to be there as fathers to these children. Thank you, Lord, for what you will do in the lives of these children. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we lift up to you those in our family who are well, Ray. We pray for Ray, for healing for him this morning, for Calvin, for Simon for Karen, for Jill, for Pauline, for Tom, for Dave, Rita, and Chikamoso. Father, we just lift our brothers and sisters to you, Lord. We ask for your healing touch upon them now. you would restore them and heal them Lord.
Father, we pray for our world as well, our country, our government. Dear Lord, I'd like to pray for the family of the MP um, who was stabbed in Essex this weekend. I pray for him, his family, and all politicians. Nobody doing their job should be stabbed. We pray for democracy. We pray for fairness. And that these evil people will not change our way of living. I pray for peace and love and the end to this endless violence. It upsets me every time I listen to the news. I pray that this end of violence will be brought to an end. We will all love each other. We can all live in harmony. There will be no more war. Thank you, dear Lord. Amen. In the darkness. The darkness cannot extinguish it. The light shines in the darkness. 